Welcome, everybody. Wow. Yeah, you, you need to get right up there, too. I know, it's just, you know, I sort of move around when I talk, and I, you know, it inhibits my trip. <laughs> I can't hear you. We can hear you. I know. I know. <laughs> just tip it up a little. Just well, it's, it, it doesn't stay. Oh. Mike, yep. can we just try and fix that so it will stay upward a little bit? There, I got it. Okay, great. <laughs> so welcome Thank you, Mike. back to our Love and Awareness Retreat morning session with Roshi and Ram Dass. And yesterday we got through uh, pretty well defining what the love part of love and awareness is. And this morning we're going to investigate awareness. So I want to pose this question first to you, Roshi, to give us some kind of uh, description <laughs> of, of awareness. Um, and um, in my own experience, my when I was aware of, the first time I was aware of awareness was uh, in India where we were all doing Vipassana courses and probably Ramdas would concur somewhat uh, in the process of Vipassana's insight meditation um, and in the process of that we were taught to um, what they called sweep through, you know Vipassana so right? You, this is something that you've done, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Did you? <laughs> Anyhow, in the process, uh, you you were the the uh, idea was to get aware of the impermanence sweeping through your body. So that was the first idea that we had of awareness, but there, that was a, an awareness had a doing to it, so it was more relative than absolute awareness. So we'd like you to talk about awareness and those two levels. Thank you so much. Well, I, I want to begin with uh, a gratitude to Daniel. Is Daniel here this morning? Daniel, hi. So Daniel reminded me it wasn't the Vajra Chedika, it was the Avatamsaka Sutra. So correction on yesterday's story. And um, the School for Social Service was actually established in 1964. So I met Ty in 66 in New York and was so, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, was so fortunate in 1990 to um, go to Vietnam and uh, take hidden in my suitcase um, a handwritten manuscript in Vietnamese uh, to his monastery. The, I think the manuscript is knowing a better way to live alone. Uh, and that, um, that manuscript is, was, it, it was actually incredible to be in his monastery at that time. When I was in Hanoi, um, uh, there were probably three old trucks uh, in 1990, sort of rumbling through the street, and the rest were, you know, sort of human propelled carts and so on. But in Hue, where uh, the uh, monastery was that Thai grew in, um, and where he was beloved, there was a hermitage um, which was never occupied except um, it had a picture of Thai in it, and it was dedicated to him. So knowing the better way to live alone, I thought was such an appropriate manuscript to sneak into that world. Um, because it's about uh, a monk um, who has a particular attitude toward um, awareness. So uh, Daniel, thank you for that reminder. And Daniel's done an amazing artwork, which I've not seen, but he was describing to me. He's going to send me uh, a link to it on the Avatamsaka Sutra, which was uh, shown in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 
which is a sutra that addresses in 1,643 pages the enlightenment of the Buddha. Wow. wow. <laughs> so you can imagine what the artwork is like. So um, let me just say a few things about awareness. Um, in our tradition, um, we would talk about the experience of primary awareness. And um, that is something that is really uh, extraordinary in the context in which we find ourselves today. And it is this unmediated, unfiltered, uh, non-conceptually based experience through the sense fields of this moment as it is. And the cognitive process that many of us engage in, like uh, figuring out things or describing things or naming things, is not really so much a part of that. It is an experience that is um, primary. And to become, you know, to be in that means that we've withdrawn um, this both monitoring awareness, in other words, this process where we are uh, looking at something. So I think that's what you're speaking about, Raghu. Probably in our worlds, there's slightly different takes on how this operates, but um, I think very simply, the descri describing nature um, is uh, not so engaged or not engaged at all. And even the monitoring nature is not engaged. So it's, you're in this non-dual experience of things just as they are. You're in this, uh, the medium of the experience and where the qualia or the, uh, what it's likeness of things. Um, uh, we're not applying descriptions. And then the secondary process of awareness is when we're monitoring and describing. And uh, monitoring is um, a kind of bearing witness process. And that, that's a wonderful experience. In fact, in our work, and last night we had a wonderful talk with Duncan um, about death and dying. And um, what did you say about you know, what caregivers are supposed to do? What qualities of a rock are you supposed to do? Be. A rock, a loving rock. A loving rock. So, um, you know, when you're monitoring your experience, in other words, you become aware of your awareness. When you're monitoring your experience, it is from the point of view of bearing witness what our good friend Bernie Glassman speaks about, or your kind of loving rock. You're not turning attention to your experience with a quality of a judgment. But um, you're aware, as in what Ravi was saying, for example, of um, everything being uh, characterized in your subjective experience by this feeling uh, or the sense of impermanence. And in fact, that sense goes even into the experience of being, um, you know, everything is characterized by insecurity. Because you can't really actually, weirdly enough, depend on anything. Or it's a kind of Heraclitus moment, you know, where you're not stepping moment by moment into the same river twice. And so what's really powerful is it's, it's not just the grief that arises because this moment's going to pass from you. But it's the gratitude that arises that this moment is present. So the qualia of this moment can be characterized also by this sense of just extraordinary gratefulness. Wow, it's the wow of things, you know, or the awesome of things. But your little mind isn't going wow and awesome. You're just in the wow and the awesome of it. So when we were talking with Duncan last night for his podcast, um, uh, he shared that his mother died but three weeks ago, and he was in the knot of grief. And I said to Duncan, this is the only time in your life where you can enter into the experience of the fullness of grief around the loss of your mother. This is the only moment in our life now, just now, 
that we can enter into the kind of communion that Baba sets the field for. This is right now. So the invitation is not to distract ourselves through media or through uh, cognition, through naming or characterizing, judging, but it is to allow ourselves to be really in this, the fullness of this moment. By the same token, it's really fun to think. I mean, the objects of mind are really fun. I love to think, and this guy is just a hell of a thinker, you know? <laughs> so, um, it's not to say that the cognizing experience is it valuable. It's one of these uh, delights that we in, as human beings were endowed with. And um, it's also one of our curses. Because then, through the thinking mind, we objectify the world. And when we objectify, we go into the experience of self and other. And then out of that experience, a kind of meanness or dissociative uh, process can arise. So it's more to take, you know, uh, we were talking about the death trip last night. So that was, I, I said to RD, because he and I do a lot of death stuff. And, you know, I said, we're not going to do that. This, you know, we're going to do loving awareness and not our death thing. But, um, <laughs> but you actually can't get away from the death thing. You know, it's with us. It's a kind, it's a kind of miracle, including the next exhale. And the drop at the end of the exhale. And it's not to conceptualize the exhale. It's rather to um, be so fully in it and to experience the drop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is what he and I do during internal Tai Chi. We do the drop at the end of the exhale, and then the inhale just fills us up, just like the next moment. It's kind of a miracle. So awareness is a beautiful medium that um, uh, even the old uh, masters of China say that um, all things, not all beings, but all things are moving toward enlightenment at various velocities. And so from that perspective, what do we mean by enlightenment? So from the Zen perspective, it's kind of wonderful because what we say, um, actually a better word is that we, I prefer to use is not enlightenment because that just sounds like, I don't know. But um, anyway, you can surmise. Um, the word that we use in our Sangha is awakening. What is it to be really awake? You know, free of chicken fat. <laughs> but to be, you know, vividly present in an undistracted way um, where the sense of uh, the completeness of this moment is fully engaged. So I feel that that is um, the practice that we're engaged upon. And the valence of uh, awareness with an object and awareness, the valence of awareness without an object, um, is to be explored. So when the object of our awareness is awareness, and that's very powerful, I'm not right, I think that's your, your question. You know, part of the process is to become aware of being aware. And aware of the actual experience or the sort of field of awareness. And then that duality, that uh, separateness drops away. And we can, for a moment, become awake and in the experience of oneness. So that's my opinion. <laughs> Ram Das, do you want to comment from another perspective? <laughs> another person. Not really. There's only one perspective. But.
It's not <clears throat> the, the, when you say I, the, your awareness of things, that is not, that's in the soul. And you're getting the awareness, the awareness of thoughts, the awareness of your incarnation. It, life, the ego is the incarnation, is no and the soul comes into the incarnation and soul, what I want to say to you is that you are souls. You are souls that taken an incarnation. You are taking an incarnation and that incarnation includes the ego. Does that get through? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> You are a, a soul 
your soul we represent in our hearts, although it no, it, it's so uh, anywhere, anywhere. The soul comes from. We, we can call the soul uh, uh, light bodies, light bodies. The soul comes from the one, and the soul is going, you're, you are the soul, you are the soul, and the soul uh, goes along incarnation, incarnation, incarnation. That and when each incarnation is learning from the incarnation, and the incarnation is 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 the soul's karma, the soul's karma. You are a soul. You are going going through incarnations and this is one of them you are in an incarnation you uh, mistakenly you are thinking you are the incarnation you are these bodies you are this good ego you're coming into the incarnation and you get mixed up and you you have you think you are the incarnation um, now The soul, your you as a soul, has consciousness, has 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 awareness, has love. That's you. That's you. That's you as, as you. Uh, just like to say, I, a self, a self, a self has awareness. I'm aware of all of you. Aware. That awareness is not you said, you know, you, the, 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 the mind has all things we call thinking and, and, and figuring out. Worrying about things and do all that stuff. And but the awareness, it's like the the, 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 the brain people, the brain surgeons and stuff like that. 
they think they think that awareness is in the brain. This is a, between this is between science and spirituality. There's quite a, a, a fight going on in this because they want to they want to think that the thing I uh, like you hold uh, the brain uh, has a win. But the awareness is in the soul. It is in the soul. In the soul. The soul comes from comes from the one. And the one is not a man with a beard. <laughs> the one is consciousness. Love, light. And you, you think of it as a cloud. And that cloud goes into these single separate beings <coughs> called souls, or light beings, light beings. And as they come down to light beings, they, 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 the one, oh, this is complicated, <laughs> the one wants to experience, experience separateness and things, the, the one comes through the soul and its awareness and then goes through your eyes and through your mouth and through your senses, all kinds of senses. And then it takes information back and back and back and back. But the soul doesn't, remember you are the soul, you are the soul. And that's where your awareness is. I don't understand myself. <laughs> <laughs>
sounds arise and they're completely insubstantial, they'll pass away shortly. You can come home to the breath body, keeping it really simple. the spirit of our retreat, loving awareness, opening up the field of awareness. mechanism, it just is kind of hard to dial down, and when you try to dial it down, it dials up, so as you bring attention to the breath body and thoughts and feelings and sensations are present, just like the sound of the airplane going overhead a few minutes ago, or the sound of laughter in the background, or the the beeping, just impermanent, all of it just flowing.
pursue the cultivation a little more relative to something that Ramdas you've taught since I first heard you, first lecture practically about the witness and, and how the witness relates to our being able to get into the present moment and awareness. If you start at the ego up here and you want to get down into your heart where it's the spiritual spiritual which we will call the soul. If you want to go from here to here, think of the spiritual heart. Is loving awareness that it is loving awareness. So up here, start to focus on your middle of your chest. Even put your finger on it. And then you will start with this mantra. It's a, a phrase instead of a mantra. A phrase. I am loving awareness. I am loving
to loving awareness. The loving awareness is is a different plane of consciousness. So pretty soon you instead of saying loving awareness. You don't, don't, I am, after a while, loving awareness, and pointing to your heart is another signpost on <coughs> the loving awareness is subtle, like the air that you breathe. Loving awareness. Loving awareness. Loving awareness. Loving awareness. Loving difficulty in shifting planes of consciousness.
witness
infinite. Moments have no relation to time and space. Just come into the moment. Experience your spiritual self. self is your real self. Why don't we take a uh, five-minute break here? <laughs> 